So, ah, hello everybody. Sorry. <clears throat> right when I'm starting the video, of course. <laughs> ah, I hope you guys are doing absolutely amazing. I, myself, have got a little bit of a head cold, chest congestion, ah, horrible stuffy nose. Not sure what it is. Normal, I don't get sick very easily, but anyway, look at that. As you know, you already saw the heading for the video, but look at beautiful no barking dogs I'm talking Shh. dogs <laughs> look at that these are of course elderberries just gorgeous look at that and this happens to be our native Florida subspecies this is Sambucus nigrum nigra I think it's nigra Sambucus nigra which is a subspecies of the, you know, larger North American elderberry, Sambucus canadensis, I believe it is. Yeah, I think it's canadensis. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sambucus canadensis, and this is the subspecies Nigra here in Florida. These guys grow absolutely everywhere. Here's some plants. I'm going to be propagating these and growing me some more. And you just see them growing everywhere. They're basically in Central Florida. And every single ditch, every wet spot, anywhere where there used to be water or will be water, moist spots, even dry spots, some are adapted to a bit of dry, you will find elderberries. And they're in full season right now. Every corner, every ditch, every side of the road is just absolutely loaded with their big clusters of beautiful white flowers. And they smell just oh, heavenly. Nice and light scent to them, but really heavenly. And then they, of course, turn into those beautiful, beautiful dark purple berries. Look at those. Just gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. Look at how pretty those are. And we all know what elderberries are good for. And it doesn't really matter the, the species, the North American or the European. They're both, you know used the same both extremely powerful you know anti-sickness <laughs> for colds and coughs and everything else and i mean those berries look at anti-cancer everything under the sun these things are just powerhouse you know nutrition and and healthiness so if you can grow them which you can grow them pretty much anywhere you can grow them in pots you can grow them in the ground they're cold tolerant, super easy to grow trees. If you got a damp spot or like I said in pots, you know, grow yourself some elderberries. You know, what else can you say about them? The berries, the whole plant is technically toxic. You know, you don't want to eat the leaves or anything. But you can obviously eat the completely ripe, completely purple berries. And you can eat the the uh, flowers, the flower clusters, you know, you stick them in water with some sugar and ferment it a little bit. Oh, it tastes good. Just let it soak in sugar water for a few days. Or you fry them in a sweet batter. Very, very delicious. The, the, the open flower heads, really good. And then the berries, of course. You can dry them into a powder and mix them in your drinks. You can make pies out of them. You can make your tinctures out of them, dry the berries, put them in alcohol, smash them up, pies, jams, jellies, sauces, all sorts of freaking awesomeness. Mm. Getting hungry. <clears throat> Sorry, I had to pause it there. Had a bit of a uh, hacking my lungs out moment. <laughs> Where were we? Uh, oh, deliciousness all the way around. You know, red berries, delicious you know, uses for the flowers. Look those up, you know. But you don't want to touch the leaves or anything. Those are not edible. And there is another plant that kind of looks like elderberry, which is the, the water hemlock, which will grow in ditches and stuff. But honestly, if, you know, you shouldn't eat anything unless you know exactly what it is first off. So don't do that. <laughs> you know. Elderberries are nice woody tree shrubs. Water hemlock is kind of a 
you know, a succulent kind of noted herb, you know, you can tell the difference. But always make sure, guys, before you stick anything in your pile, that you know what the heck it is, right? But, um, yeah, I decided I needed some more elderberries, so I got some beautiful, nice canes here. They're called canes. And elderberries grow very fast. You literally, every year, the way I grow my elderberries is I, every fall, completely cut them to the ground. Run them over the lawnmower, just cut them to the ground, and they will re-sprout canes every year. And those new canes will flower in the spring. So, eat, this is just this year's growth, by the way. You see that? Nice new leaves. Just this year's growth right there. That's how fast they grow. And then you can see where I cut the flowers off and cut the, the fruit bunches off. So, you know, they flower on first year canes and on new growth. And, you know, you can keep them nice and bushy and, and re sprouting by just cutting them back every year. And they'll send up new shoots, canes, kind of like blackberries, you know? So, one plant and cut it back at the end of the year, and it'll send up. A whole bunch of new shoots and those will flower or you can just leave them alone they will grow into small shrubby trees if they're happy and you know they, they will still flower every year and get loaded with flowers so whatever way you want to do it they respond really well to being cut back though or you can grow a nice hedge out of them either way but yeah those berries i just love them and of course if you smash them Let's see. Beautiful, beautiful purple red. You picking that up? Just gorgeous. Look at that. Just filled with antioxidants and mm, all sorts of good stuff for you. And flavor wise, mm, it's kind of like a. Mm, kind of like a sweet medicinally flavor. They are sweet, they get a little sweetness. Hmm, these are actually really good ones. I got a little sweetness to them. Look it off my finger. Um, kind of like a sweet medicinally flavor. You know, not bad, but something that you could tell has some good medicinal benefits to it. But anyway, guys, I'm going to keep this short. You know, if you make them into a pie, by the way, <coughs> with a bit of sugar, that goes away and they taste, ugh. Oh, delicious elderberry pie or if you're sick like I am I'm going to take these take the stems off and uh, add just a touch of honey to these maybe some stevia and just heat it you don't want to boil it heat it just enough to break it down a little bit never boil it and uh, probably make some juice drink out of it and sip on this for the next couple days Mm, but really good flavor guys and you can dry the berries you can put them in alcohol again you know for medicinal purposes you do so much with them so look that up you know but for the plants which I focus on super easy to grow you can take cuttings just take a cutting you know nice cutting like this and either stick it in some damp vermiculite or you know glass of water and they root very very easily and then you plant them out they can take, you know, the dry, but for them to get their best production and best fruit, they like it a bit moist. Even standing water, but for the best production, a damp spot, really rich, and they love it. Full sun is better, of course, for fruit. And, yeah, they're cold tolerant, obviously. They're native all over the U.S. and up into Canada, so they can take the cold, no problem. What else? Ah, they are wind pollinated, by the way. Um, this one, I don't have any flowers on this. Here's a kind of a messed up cluster of flowers. There you go. Little white, minute flowers. Pretty, huh? And they smell. Oh, they smell amazing. They really, really smell amazing. Look at those. Mmm. Oh, those smell good. Um, they're wind pollinated. And they are self-incompatible, so you need to have at least two unrelated plants to get fruit off of them. 
which here in Florida is not an issue because they're they're so prolific and so common, which everywhere, they're literally everywhere. In every ditch and every roadside, every bit of woods, you're finding these. But if you live in an area where they're not as common, you need to make sure you have two plants that are flowering at the same time. And all of mine are the Florida subspecies here, the Nigra, and that's what these are. And I actually have several different lines, you know, of them. That some fruit early, some fruit late. And this one right here, which I call, uh, uh, <laughs> which I call Brittany because I, I go and pick up stuff from a girl named Brittany. And I, I collected this one years ago. And it is where we at the end of April here. And it's ripening up really really nicely hold on to its berries really nicely and it's still fruiting but there are some basically flowering fruiting year round here in florida i'm not sure about other states but there's always fruit and always flowers here in florida even during the winter summer with these guys so yeah there you go guys elderberries grow food Grow delicious food, and if it happens to be extremely, extremely good for you, like, all the better, right? <laughs> See you guys later. Thanks for watching. I love you. Elderberries. Mm. Absolutely delicious. Look at those. Just beautiful. And you don't want to eat those green berries. Just pick those out. There's not very many of those. And not those ones. You want the nice, beautiful, dark purple ones. There you go, right there. That's what you want to eat. And they are super nutritious and delicious. Look how pretty those are. Super easy to grow, so no reason you shouldn't get to it. Especially as things get crazy, you know. Having medicinal things is very, very important. Especially things that can knock out colds and viruses. And those little berries right there. See how close we can get. See how focus. Those little berries right there are just amazing. Mind-blowingly amazing for your health.